We do not look both ways to see if there's a train coming. <laughs> we that sort of thing to British Rail. If there's a train coming, the lights will flash and they'll drop the barriers to tell us. So, what do we do when we approach a level crossing? Well, we certainly do not put our foot down on the accelerators as you just like that, do we? <laughs> yep, I do not accept that. That was only a nervous reaction on your part. Now, you still haven't answered my question. What do we do when we are almost on top of a level crossing and the barriers are being lowered and we're liable to hit the bloody thing? Turn left, this is the turn left, the piddling the wheel. All right, then you turn left, left. Oh. my head down for a very good reason. Yes, yes, you turn left eventually, but I had intended you to turn onto the slip road, not the track itself. <laughs> stands a reason I never mentioned the turn onto the track itself. Be because there was a train coming. That's why they dropped the barrier, probably the 9.15. Do you have the correct time? Quarter pass? Yes, well, I don't usually approve of you putting your foot down, Mrs. Davis, but I think in the circumstances... <laughs> stand well back from the platform for the through train to Penzance. <laughs> for the motor. That's a forward for the breakdown track. That don't need towing in, though. Could have stuck a stamp on it and posted it. <laughs> well, suppose we're looking for a new one, then? Uh, yes, uh, by 4.30 this afternoon, if possible. I've got a contract lesson I can't afford to lose. What do you have in mind? Same as before? It, well, if possible. Yeah, nice little motors, them. Get a lot of them in here. Mostly from me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, uh, do you think you might just be able to fix me up? For a regular customer like you, I think something can be arranged. As a matter of fact, I've got a brother in the motor trade, in a manner of speaking. Specialises in short order commissions. Just give me your order, come up the goods and two hours flat. Never been out of fire. Providing it ain't too distinctive, if you get my drift. Two hours? Yeah, two, two and a half. Depends how quick the paint for us. We're going over first, you know, sort of tight it up a bit. <laughs> get it so that the previous owner don't recognise it. So that's clear. I've got very close. Keep it away. I can't stand them. They give me the willies. Oh, don't be silly. It's only a cat. I know it's only a cat. That's what's wrong with it. I hate cats. I've got a phobia about them. I've had it ever since I was a kid, and they know it. You know what? I swear they rub themselves up against me out of pure spite. <laughs> Either that, or they like to watch me break out in spots. You know what? When I was a kid, we had this mean old marmalade Tom that always slept on my bed. Nobody else's, just mine. Even though it knew I hated it. God, I get nightmares about that cat even now. I can see it, sitting on me throat, wheezing. <laughs> its narrow, yellowed, slitted eyes burning into mine. Its rabid claws searching me throat for an artery. <laughs> it's no joking matter. Well, I'm sorry, but, I mean, you can't go through life that, like that, can you? I mean, you have to do something about it. Look, I know. I'll hold Tiggy here and you can stroke him. I must 
milkman. You haven't got a lot of bottle. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> stick your hand out. I can't. Well, of course you can. You're a grown man. Come on, stick your hand out. Come on, further. You know, it's an irrational fear, that's all. Now, good. Now, good boy. Now, very gradually lower it. No, lower it, I said, not shake it. Look, here. It's got me! I can feel its fangs in my wrist! Don't be silly, those are my nails. Now, come on, have another go. Are you sure you've got your eyes shut? <laughs> come on, now closer. Now slowly stroke oh. it. Oh, slowly and gently. Oh, that's good. Oh. Oh. Good grief! It's Karl Marx. <laughs> I'll give you marks, all right, right round your neck. Now, Lester, put that thing down before you cut yourself. It wasn't me, I was thinking of cutting. Oh, 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 oh. What do you mean by that? I heard you. I was outside the door. Eavesdropping. Every sordid, despicable little word. You were going at it, hammer and tongs. Or even hammer and sickle. <laughs> <laughs> do you want to do John the Baptist impersonations? <laughs> Look, there was nothing sordid about him stroking me. No, I don't want to hear. Well, we were just trying to solve his problem. Yes, I'll bet you were. <laughs> I can't touch him, you see. You're too bloody right, you can't. <laughs> well, listen, you leave him alone. I mean, you're making a fool of yourself. I'm making a fool of me. If you insist. Well, I'm, uh, go on, push me, push me. I'm nearly there. One more straw and I'll be right over the edge. You've never seen me like this, have you, either of you? <laughs> oh, it's terrifying, isn't it? <laughs> How easy it is to push a man into a killing rage. Sanity is but one hair's breadth wide. A thin veneer of social habits separates us from our baser animal instincts, our primeval lust of pack and claw. The world about us, BBC Two, David Bellamy. One. No, no, two. I know that for a fact because it clashes with the world of sport on the other side. No, one, BBC One, eight o'clock Sundays. And it's not the world about us, it's a living world. No way. No, I, look, I bet you anything you like is BBC One. I know that for a fact because I never get to see it because he likes to watch the other side. Where's all gummage? Where's all gummage? Precise. <laughs> Wurzel Gummidge. Oh, now, Wurzel Gummidge is on Gummidge first, on. Exactly. Oh, because they moved it on account of that quiz. Yeah. Hello, where's Trotsky gone? He was here a minute ago. Oh, don't worry, he's probably having a sulk in the garden. Uh, while you're out there, darling, will you cut the head? Oh, Wurzel Gummidge! <laughs> in the kitchen of all places, in front of the children, shamelessly going at it with that vicious little yoghurt vendor. <laughs> <laughs> and she had the gall to sit there and deny it. Uh, what, do you think I am stupid or something? I mean, I'm, uh, I'm a husband, aren't I? The father of the children, aren't I? It's nearly always in the kitchen. I mean, how can I pop... What? percent <laughs> of the time, according to statistics. Sorry? Well, according to the Reader's Digest, if it's going to happen, it's most likely to happen in the kitchen, when you're too busy to take precautions. <laughs> what are you waffling on about? Accidents. Nearly always happen in the kitchen. You know, there's a man in America spent half his lifetime trying to communicate with dolphins. Perhaps he could help. Dolphins are very intelligent. Oh, yes, well, just a thought. They're the most intelligent animal after man. Yes, well, that makes sense, doesn't it? Sooner or later, someone or something was bound to beat woman into second place. <laughs> I mean, if it, if it hadn't been the dolphin, it'd have been the chimp. <laughs> or the glow worm. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, I've just had a terrible thought. A vision at the end of the world. A silicon chip with female logic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what am I laughing at? My business is crumbling about my ears. I've got the world's only wafer-thin car. <laughs> and my wife's having a dally with a dwarf. <laughs> yes? No. <laughs> yes. And in the first place, no. And in the second place, no. You've never been so humiliated. But what about me? I mean, I, I come home, find my wife in the arms of the milkman. Yeah. All right, if you want to split hairs. I come home, find my wife in the arm of the milkman. Yeah. Oh, a misunderstanding, yes. Helping him overcome his fear of pussycats. Yes, yeah. well, they probably do it deliberately, don't they? <laughs> yes, I see. All right, I'll ring you back. <laughs> yes, I know. I'm sorry, love. Yes, yes, forgive me. Yeah, I... Well, I do apologise, yes. Um, is Bert still there? C could I speak to him? Ah, hello, Bert. 
Yeah, yeah, about all those nasty things I said about you in the past. Yeah. Well, I meant them. <laughs> and get out of my house. <laughs> he says I'm to call round any time. <laughs> bravely pulled Mrs. Davis out of the path of the approaching inexcorable juggernauts. <laughs> <laughs> juggernaut. And it's inexorable, not inexcorable. <laughs> Did they teach you anything at school? Yeah, not to mess about the inexcorable juggernauts. <laughs> You're already asking to join Maggie's three million, aren't you? Get on with it, sir, boss man. <laughs> right. Now, the nearest turn off... Was a mile ahead. Was a mile ahead. Who's telling this story, me or you? Oh, it's an exciting bit. Right, well, it's just then we heard the hooting of a train. It was at this moment that the car decided to pack up. Well, all that bumping can't have done it any good. So, there we were, stuck on the line with a, this in its... In, uh, well, this train hammering towards us. I nipped out smartish. <laughs> Mrs Davis was a bit hysterical at the time. Well, I couldn't just leave her there. So I sort of dashed back and uh, pulled her from the car. Don't panic. I was a brownie. Oh, it's a good job I was in the Boy Scouts. <laughs> I saved her just in the nick of time. It must have taken a real cool lead to do that. To go back and save her when you might have been killed yourself. Oh, oh it was nothing. <laughs> right, what are you going to do for transport? Are you going to go back getting another car at such short notice? You can't afford one the way your business is going, Dan Hill. Yeah. There's no problem. As a matter of fact, we need a new car. And owing to a very advantageous arrangement I have with my insurance broker, I should have no problem in getting a new one. As a matter of fact, I've got somebody working on a replacement right now. <laughs> <laughs> Charlotte, dictation, please. From J. Davis, branch manager, Westland Bank, etc., to Mr. L. Small, Lester Small, School of Motoring. Look up the address. Dear Mr. Small, dear Small, <laughs> Small. <laughs> It has long been the fashion in banking circles for account holders such as you to deposit money with banks such as we. You appear to have ignored this historical precedent and devised a unique system of your own, whereby banks such as we deposit money with account holders such as you. <laughs> this system, which we will call for the sake of clarity, grievous debt, comma, would, comma, under normal circumstances, comma, or in a happier age, comma, have called for your immediate transference to a place of penal rectitude. <laughs> Instead, and out of the pure and unalloyed kindness of my heart, we have arrived at an agreement whereby the aforesaid grievous debt of uh, 5,200 pounds will be serviced only for as long as you keep from off my shoulders the grievous burden of teaching my wife to drive. <laughs> uh, however, may I again remind you that the slightest demonstration of faint-heartedness on your part, and you will be immediately liable for every penny. <laughs> Please consider this a threat. <laughs> a new paragraph. And my wife has today informed me that as a result of your continued uh, bullying, sarcasm, and uh, 
general harassment with one R, she has been once again exposed to mortal danger, the after effects of which have been to um, leave her in a state of subdued shock and leave her almost speechless. Please uh, accept the enclosed cheque for £200. <laughs> Small. <gasps> you! <laughs> he's out of the country. Yeah. Which country? This one. He's out of this one. <laughs> I mean, which country has he gone to? Which country? Ah. I don't believe you. I think he's in that room. Room? Yes, that's where he is. Roomania. Yeah. <laughs> Roomania? Roomania, yes. Which part? Pardon? Which part? Oh, of Romania. Yeah, of Romania. The capital. <laughs> what is the capital? <laughs> of Romania. Of Romania. <laughs> book, bull, um, book. <laughs> Good try, Miss Scott. Stand aside. I know he's in there. You can't speak to him again, Miss You can't be that callous. It's not human. It's him or me. Stand aside. I know he's in there. <laughs> Will, without let, hindrance, delay or demur, subject to all here before mentioned exclusions, agree to provide full reimbursement of the total cost of the vehicle insured, blah, blah, and so forth. Uh, oh, here we are. Uh, um, such agreement to be concluded only with mutual assent. Uh, it's 13 twists. What? Uh, 13 twists. Uh, if you want to make a real hangman's noose, that is. <laughs> He's supposed to be unlucky. <laughs> So why anybody should bother about being unlucky when they've about to have their neck stretched quite beyond me. <laughs> Thirteen. Oh, thanks. That's all right. It's a pleasure. Whereupon, the insured party only shall continue the policy until such time as he, the insured party, is... Well, there you are. You see, it's perfectly plain. I mean, you made it out yourself. You must have known what you were doing. Well, I must have been mad. <laughs> yes, well... <laughs> you, uh, you were quite happy to take my premiums off me every month. You know you must have had over 80 quid off me, Charles. 80 pounds? <laughs> what is that? I could have been rolling in it. I could have bought my way into Lloyd's. The world could have been my winkle. <laughs> eighty pounds. Let's see, that's total paid in eighty. Total paid out seven thousand three hundred <laughs> and thirty-six pence. I seem to be showing something of a loss. <laughs> I thought you people laid off some of your risk, you know, like the bookies. Why did you underwrite the whole thing personally? I was greedy, wasn't I? Wanted all six pounds a week for myself. <laughs> oh, well. There you are. Don't spend it all in the same shop. <laughs> you haven't signed it. What? Haven't <laughs> I? Oh, how remiss of me. Any particular preference? Ink? Blood? <laughs> Pardon me while I sever an artery. <laughs> claims like this and I shall be wiped out. I shall be finished. Do you understand? Well, you must have some money in reserve. What about your life savings? You're holding them. <laughs> <laughs> Next time you want to have an incident with a train, kindly have the goodness to stay in the car. <laughs> no hard feelings. Goodbye, Mr. Small. Before I do something I might regret. That's the bit. About my no claim. <laughs> Allow me. <laughs> no, I'm sorry, no way. But it's a goodbye. You're right, goodbye, and you can drive it back. <laughs>
try and knock Tim off as a good boy. That'd be important, sir. And if it sounds important, pull the plug out. Go ahead. Stolen vehicle. Now, what did I tell you? Sand-coloured mini. Oh. Nice little car, then. My wife's got one. Property of Mrs. Gladys Rogers. <laughs> yeah, by the mean. Attention. I want every vehicle onto this, understood? I don't sit there grinning like an ape. Get after him. You know what we're looking for? Sand-coloured mini. Like that one. Only not the two-tone job. Get in! Working the touch of the panics? No. Oh. Wait till we're right behind him, then give him a real perla. Oh, you little beauty. All units, Charlie, disengage. Copy me. Where's that bloody map? <laughs> Intercept. Grid reference. 481-236. Correction. 236. You're arrived, Inspector. Oh, it's, it's no joke being hijacked. And you weren't trying to evade arrest, were you, sir? You were looking for a telephone booth. How did you guess? In a quarry. Every phone must have been vandalised. What's a wicked society we live in. There's a lot of it about nowadays. Look after him. Yeah. <laughs> we know you're in there. <laughs> If it isn't the very pathetic Mr. Small. <laughs> and what are you doing, sir? Trying to get yourself in the Guinness Book of Records? You wouldn't be thinking of booking me, would you? Why? Your variety act? <laughs> Let's see what we've got so far. Now, aiding and abetting a larceny, conspiracy to take and drive away, 
receiving, avoiding arrest, failure to stop, speeding, damage to property, operate in a mobile abattoir without a permit. You've left out, have you? Have I indeed, sir? That's very good of you. What would you suggest I should add? What about the brakes? Ah, thank you, sir. Very good. Defective brake. How would you spell defective? D-E-T. D E T. D E T. Very droll, sir. Laughter in the face of adversity. I like that, sir. <laughs> Defective brakes. Ditto handbrake. Handbrake. Ineffective horn. No horn. <coughs> Worn tyres. Incorrect pressure. Mixed radials. You're getting all this down, are you? No wing mirror. Misaligned headlamps. Doggy windscreen wiper. <laughs> I'd hate to be the owner of this junk pile when you catch up with it. <laughs> yeah, criminal negligence allowing a car in this state on the road. I tell you, whoever the owner of this car is, is going to be in no hurry to reclaim it. <laughs> Six months behind bars for this little lot, would you say? Obviously a member of the criminal fraternity. If you have any trouble in bringing this motorised lunatic to justice, you just have a word with me. I have some very good contacts on the local paper. Go away. <laughs> and remember, from now on, you are a mark. Do not look both ways to see if there's a train coming. <laughs> Any that sort of thing's a British rare. If there's a train coming, the lights will flash and they'll drop the barriers to tell us. So, what do we do when we approach a level crossing? Well, we certainly do not put our foot down on the accelerators as you just have to do. <laughs> yep, I do not accept that. That was only a nervous reaction on your part. Now, you still haven't answered my question. What do we do when we are almost on top of a level crossing and the barriers are being lowered and we're liable to hit the bloody thing? Turn left, this is the turn left, the piddling the wheel. All right, then you turn left, left. Oh. my head down for a very good reason. Yes, yes, you turned left eventually, but I had intended you to turn onto the slip road, not the track itself. <laughs> stands a reason I never mentioned the turn onto the track itself. Be because there was a train coming. That's why they dropped the barrier, probably the 9.15. Do you have the correct time? Quarter pass? Yes, well, I don't usually approve of you putting your foot down, Mrs. Davis, but I think in the circumstances... <laughs> stand well back from the platform for the through train to Penzance. <laughs> Oh, my God. Step on it. Step on it. We can't be running 
the pitch. Notes for the motor. That's a forward for the bright air truck. That don't need so 